uh, BC, Dark Dove back with you. It is uh, Monday, um, uh, this weekend on Saturday, um, it was Record Store Day as you'll all know. Um, I don't actually have any Record Store Day finds to show, unfortunately. I ended up not getting any RSD releases this year. Um, I'll go into that, I'll go into what the reason why in a minute, but um, <coughs> um, well, actually, I'm not going to it now. Um, my, I, there was a couple of things that were on my that, that were on my want list, but um, um, my local um, independent record store this year um, did a very very small selection, um, RSD selection this year round. Uh, they didn't really have anything that was massively on my want list. Um, uh, I did end up grabbing one non-RSD item while I was in there. Um, there was this, this was something that I had been looking for for quite a while. And uh, that is um, Sunra Space is the place. Uh, this is a reissue of I think this came out in 73 originally, so this is a reissue from last year. Um, in on what label? On Blue Tom. So yeah, um, it is. Um, there we go. Uh, yeah, so um, there was a move. Sunrad did star in this kind of a well call a movie, it's kind of a pretty far out movie, uh, which was also called Space is the Place. Uh, I've seen bits of it. I remember seeing kind of clips of it being shown at an art um, exhibition which I attended um, a few years ago. I've never seen it in full, but um, this album actually is not connected with that movie. There is a separate um, soundtrack album to the Space is the Place movie, but uh, this just basically shares the title. Uh, so yeah, so Sunra, um, as you can imagine, this is pretty far out stuff. Um, a heavy use of Moog uh, synthesizer. Uh, it's basically two long tracks. Um, uh, the first track is, is very vocal heavy. Uh, it um, contains a kind of a chanted repeat uh, of the title basically um, over and over again in a, in a kind of a hypnotic kind of form and the second side is, is, a, is, a, is a kind of a freak out um, extravaganza so um, uh, I didn't end up, I didn't get any, I, I met up with Ben Costello uh, later in the day and we did go off to another store another store which is a bit out, it's not in the city centre, it's a bit out um, in the suburbs, um, did spot, an, there, there was this other Sunra release um, for RSD Day uh, on coloured vinyl, I, I just forget the name of it just now, but uh, I, it was far too expensive, I, I didn't grab it. Um, a, a lot of the stuff that I saw was very, very, very pricey. Stuff. So I actually I didn't grab any RSD releases this year, but uh, but I but I did did grab this, um, which was on my want list for a long time, and I have added to my quite small uh, Sunra collection. So um, space is the place by Sunra. Um, another couple of recent finds. Um, next two finds. Um, I got these in a local flea market. There is a, a new flea market opened in town since the new year. There's a couple of vinyl sellers there. Um, I picked these up on different days. Um, now the first item is something. Um, some of you might be familiar with a movie called um, Cruising, which starred um, Al Pacino. A pretty controversial movie from 1980 in which he played a 
detective who goes undercover in the New York gay SNM community. Um, I saw it on on the TV one night, and um, it's a bit of a cult classic. Um, <laughs> um, but it, it has an absolutely fantastic soundtrack, and I had been on the lookout for the soundtrack album for a while, and I did come across um, an original vinyl copy of that soundtrack. Um, so um, I've got some some stills from the movie, so they kind of give you a an indication of the of the content but um it's fantastic stuff on this it's, uh, the some uh, there's a track by um Willie Deville and Willie Deville when he was still you know before he went to all com commercial in the 80s uh this is this is a great track heat of the moment uh there's a some great punk stuff for the uh, loneliness performed by a band called the cripples um um, rough trade, um, um, germs. Um, and there's also a track called Shape. Uh, what is this? Oh yeah, Lump, performed by a band called Mutiny, which is, which is a great kind of funk um, track, kind of in the in the in the vein of um, Parliament Funkadelic. Uh, it's a great soundtrack, and um, it's an interesting movie. Um, it's you know. It's, Kind of may not to be everybody's taste, but um, um, yeah, but a great soundtrack, and um, I picked that up for it's an original U.S. um pressing on um, uh, Columbia Lorimer, and um, picked it up for seven euros. Um, now another item which was long on my want list. Um, now, ben Costello um, has featured this band um, quite a lot. Um, they're an Irish group, um, uh, initially active in the early 70s. Um, uh, best described as progressive, progressive folk. Um, now, um, Tiernan and Oog, um, and this album is called A Tear and a Smile. This came out in 1972 on um, on Chrysalis. Uh, very hard to find in the wild. Now I actually I actually came across this album a few years ago in a charity shop, and um, I, I'm, I'm still kicking myself over this. And uh, I, I wasn't familiar with them at the time, and. Um, I could have picked it up for one euro, but um, uh, uh, it was only really through Ben Costello that I really became familiar with this group. But um, I recognised it then when I saw Ben showing it um, several years later. But um, it is very hard to find their stuff in the wild. Um, now they're. Not your kind of typical Irish folk. Um, they really have more in common with, say, the likes of Nick Drake, uh, Incredible String Band, um, John Martin. Um, as, a, as a matter of fact, um, speaking of Nick Drake, they were the first, the very first group, or, or very first artist to record uh, a Nick Drake song, uh, which was on their following follow-up album to this in 1973 called um, Strong in the Sun. Uh, I can't actually remember what, this, what the Nick Drake song was, but um, this was at a time now when Nick Drake was kind of pretty much forgotten. Um, you know, it was long before, you know, interest in him was revived again in the 80s and 90s. But um, this is a fantastic album. Um, brilliant um, um, progressive acid folk um great songwriting um and it's cost me 15 euros um it, it, the disc is kind of played quite a bit but it, but but it sounds pretty pretty good um uh, there are a few marks on it but um but it plays well enough um 
hard to find them in the wild. Uh, and as I said, um, my, kicking myself when I, well, that I didn't pick up this album when I came across it all those years ago in a charity shop, because that was, you know. But anyway, I, I have I have it in, in my mix now. Uh, tear no get a tear and a smile. Um, and they were featured recently in a records uh, record collector magazine was featured on them um, a couple of issues back. Uh, anybody who buys that album or that buys that magazine may have seen that. Okay, uh, another item which was long on my want list. Um, which I grabbed recently. I saw I grabbed this for three euros in a um, second-hand record store, and that is uh, Walter. Well, he still known as Walter at this stage. Walter Stroke Wendy Carlos uh, with the well-tempered synthesizer, and this was the follow-up to um, Switched On Bach. So, um, um, Baroque. Um, Baroque pieces by Bach and other composers performed on the Moog synthesizer, and this came out in 1969. Um, uh, original copy on CBS. Now, and another interesting thing about this is this is not the bag that this came in. Uh, when I picked this up, uh, I actually found that it was in a vertical swirl inner bag, and, uh, and that has now found a new home. Um, so th that's the bag that it actually came in. So I've um, I put it in with this um, this vertical swirl um, um, uh, the, the, um, Alex Harvey, uh, incredible Alex Harvey band album, which I picked up last year. I've I've shown this before. So uh, it's found it. In her bag, it's found a new home there. So anyway, back to um. The album itself, yeah, great, great stuff. I don't see, don't see Walter Carlos in the wild so much over here. Uh, have a small collection of his stuff, but I uh, don't tend to come across him too often. So I was very happy to pick this up. Um, Walter, who's now Wendy Carlos, um, with the well-tempered uh, synthesizer. Okay. Now, um, recently I called down to my, my hometown. Um, I, I live here in Cork City, which is, which is not where I grew up. I grew up uh, in County Cork, in the countryside, about 60 miles away from here. And um, I was back in my home village visiting my parents and um, with my boss uh, I don't drive unfortunately and um, I was in there's a town called Bantry which is near where I grew up where I was waiting for the bus back to the city and um, went on a tour of some charity shops and um, there's three charity shops in Bantry and now I didn't have much money on me so um, but I managed to make some very nice finds. Um, the first shop that I hit, it's a place I've been to before, and I've picked up some interesting stuff there in the past. Uh, I found some records on you know, there's a label called Gay Lynn, an Irish label, which I've shown before. Uh, it was set up by Sean O'Reada. Um, Specialising mainly in Irish traditional music, Irish traditional folk, um, it can be quite a collectible label. Um, the early records, a lot of stuff on it does tend to be quite um, sought after. Now I found uh, the label was founded in 1958. I found a copy of the very first records to come out on the Gaelin label. So. Um, um, uh, Galen Kilta Aaron and Kilta Aaron translates as um, a music of Ireland. Uh, this features um, Sean O'Reilly himself here uh, on piano. 
and he, he was a uh, you know a renaissance man when it comes to music he could basically put his hand to anything and and is also this guy um uh, Tomas O'Sullivan who is um singing a uh, tenor so the traditional Irish songs um with vocals and um, piano and side one then has um orchestral or little or orchestral orchestral arrangements uh it's it's in this very flimsy sleeve which there you know, there's I, I did dry it out. There is still a bit of a smell, a musty kind of smell, but um, uh, there's a bit of bit of damp, bit of kind of um fraying along the edges, um, with this gatefold sleeve. Um, the record uh slots in here, but um. It's kind of that's kind of awkward. So I've taken the record. I put the record into a regular sleeve. So this, this is the um, this is the label, that distinctive Galen label. Um, the record itself is in pretty nice condition. Uh, cleaned it, cleaned it up, and it plays pretty pretty nicely. Um, this uh, I've added it to the to, to the Discogs database. Um, I, don't, I would imagine this is quite rare. Um, um, I don't know how much it goes for, but um, and, uh, it, it, it would be being the very first record on the label. I would imagine it would be quite um, quite collectible. So very pleased with that find. Um, two seconds. Okay. Um, now I found a couple of other releases on that label. Um, now this is, I'm not 100% sure what that translates into, but this is uh, basically featuring children singing. Uh, this, this is from, this is also on Galen label, this is from the late 60s. Um, also, I, actually, I haven't actually played this one yet. Um, okay, it's actually, you know, you can see the record is kind of falling out there so it's kind of split and um record needs cleaning as well and as you can see there's a lot of damp damp along along there as well so um very musty smell as well so um um Yeah. Sorry. There's another one on the label which I picked up. Uh, this again, this is another kind of children featuring children singing, uh, school children uh, recording made in a, a children in school in Dublin. Um, uh, can 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 look are clear, which I think means something children. Obakia means Dublin. Um, this is quite collectible as well. I've seen this particular one um, in a couple of places and it goes for quite a, quite, around about 20 euros. Uh, it's very nice condition. It's in its shrink wrap. Um, the record is in really nice condition as well. Uh, bit of a musty uh, All of them have a bit of a, a bit of a musty smell off them. Um, so um there we go now the also in the same place um now I found this um now this is something that I'm gonna try and sell I'm gonna try and flip this um uh Eamon de Valera he was our former um uh, teacher or by or stroke prime minister of this country one of the founding leaders of the of the Irish Republic when it became independent from Britain, uh, one of the leaders in the 1916 Rising of the 100th anniversary of which is today. Uh, this came out in 1982 on the 100th anniversary of his birth. It's basically speeches, um, 
recordings of speeches, political speeches he made. Um, I think it's a double, is it? Yeah, it's a double. Um, um, sorry. So, um, RTE, that's, that's our national television station, it was them who released this. Um, and it comes also also with a booklet uh, I am going to try and split this I'm, I'm, I'm not going to keep this I'm, I'm not particularly not particularly a fan of, of of De Valera but I know this is collectible so um, I will try and sell it um, um, a last item I got in that same charity shop was this um, Bessie Smith CD uh, compilation of her recordings? Very nice find as well. Uh, so all five items, uh, four four vinyl and one CD, came to a total of five euros, which is excellent. I'm very pleased with that. And um, now I visited a second charity shop. Um, and found some very interesting things in there. Now they they were looking for a bit, they were a bit pricier. They, I, I did manage to get. Uh, I picked up five items which I got for ten euros, so I worked out at two euros each. Uh, they, they were being a bit greedy, and I did manage to kind of beat them down on the price. But um, three of the items at least are very interesting. Now the first one up. Uh, this. Uh, turns out to be pretty rare, and that is a very collectible 12-inch um, uh, single from 1983. Now it's a band called um, Sudeten Crash. Uh, they were a um, British electronic group, active in the early 80s. And this, as far as I know, is the only single they released. Um, it's called Kindergarten. Uh, came out in 1983 on um, Illuminated Records. Um, this is an excellent um, example of what I think would, in retrospect, be termed cold wave or minimal wave. Um, very, very pleased to find this because I do really like that. Um, you know, early 80s post-punk electronic stuff and um, this this is very rare and uh, goes for quite a lot online uh, so that that was definitely well worth two euros um, um, great um, great cover art as well uh, second item kind of in the same vein uh, this is a band called I Start Counting. Uh, again, uh, kind of synth synth pop, uh, probably a bit popular than than the other one. Uh, very much kind of in the style of um, early Depeche Mode. Uh, this is from 1984, and um, it is on the Mute label, uh, which incidentally is the same. The same um, label that the Pesh Mode were on. Um, a track here called um, "Letter to a Friend," which is a fantastic track. Uh, it's one of those tracks you kind of uh, you wonder why it wasn't a hit single, and uh, it, it wasn't uh, as it happens. But um, uh, really, really nice find, and I absolutely love that cover art. Uh, that is some kind of I don't know some kind of computer early example of computer art I presume. Um, third item in that shop um, uh, is this. Uh, now this is a band I wasn't familiar with but um, TV21 and this is called a Thin Red Line 
Uh, they were a Scottish post-punk band comprised of former members of the Resillos. And this came out in 1981 on the Decca label. Um, yeah, this is a really, really nice album. Um, great um, new wave, uh, post-punk, um, kind of jangly guitar, kind of, you know, kind of Scottish post-punk, early 80s, you know. Um, not not usually rare, but um, I'm very glad to pick it up for, for two euros. Um, but then the last two finds, um, not quite as interesting. I kind of picked them up on a whim and I kind of. Um, uh, this I picked up pretty much only for the cover, really. Um, music to bathe by. It's, it's kind of a sampler. Um, it's a compilation album from '75 that was put out by Pam Olive. Um, you know, Pam Olive, the. Um, is it or Ono Down? Yeah, Pam Olive, I think. Um, I'll probably try and clip this as well. Um, there's a couple of good tracks on it, but. Well, I mean, the. <laughs> It is a very nice cover, of course, but um, um, the other item, um, Amahal and the Night Visitors. I picked this up without really knowing much about it, but um, it's it's a it's a modern opera. Uh, I'm not crazy about it. I had to listen to it. Um, I think it was an opera that was recorded specifically for television in the fifties. Um, I wasn't too crazy. I'm not a big opera fan anyway, but um, I kind of, I don't know, I might try and flip that as well. But um, anyway, those were those were the finds um, that I made in Pantry. I'm very pleased with those Gay Lynn finds and with this, because this is, this is ultra rare and worth a lot. Uh, very, very, very collectible. Um, okay. Um, I'm just going to briefly go through um, another charity shop in town here in the city where I made a few finds lately. Um, and this is Soul, a nice compilation uh, featuring um, uh, Wilson Pickett, Otis Redding, Solomon Burke, Aretha Franklin. It's pretty common. You see this around uh, in record fairs and the in the in the bargain bin. But um, uh, grab it anyway. It's in nice condition. Um, this is an upgrade copy for me. Um, Jennifer Warren sings um, famous blue raincoat covering um, oh um. Leonard Cohen. Uh, I already have a copy of this, but this is actually an upgrade copy because this is in far better condition than the one I have. So, um, an upgrade uh, on that. Um, Deutsche Grammophon, um, the Mozart horn concertos, uh, very nice find. And the Valdi the Four Seasons. Um, every record sh collection should have this. Uh, Academy of St. Martin in the Fields with Neville Mariner. Um, picked up some very nice CDs as well uh, in various charity shops. Um, McCabe and the Bad Seeds. I already have this on vinyl, but um, I couldn't I couldn't leave this behind when I saw this for one euro fifty. Uh, Liar of Orpheus and Abattoir Blues. Um, just jumped on that. Uh, ACDC Back in Black. Um, not a not a ECDC collector, but um, I had to grab this. Um, again, another one I have on vinyl, uh, creamed Israeli years, uh, but still nice to have it on CD as well. Um, UF Orb, the Orb. I saw them back in 1995. Um, great, great band. Um, Oh, Miles Davis. <laughs> this was a gr another great um, pickup. Um, Miles Davis in a Silent Way, from 1969. Fantastic album. Um, some very nice 
baroque music um early italian chamber chamber music um and again handle um and these two which are quite early cds i think um oops back violin concertos and archive um that's me oh no no yeah so, yeah and then this now uh, this is the one on archive which is got is got the same violin concertos as well by bach on um on archive um uh Bert Janch comp uh very pleased to find that all this like best stuff is on there um tubular bells <laughs> tubular bells by um uh Mike Oldfield and another one that I already have on vinyl but um, I definitely wasn't leaving this behind. Um, John Martin Solid Air on CD. Um, Camera Obscura. Um, let's get out of this country. Scottish indie group. Um, very best of Nina Simone. A double CD. Uh, Reddish. Okay, um, yeah, that's it. So all those CDs I found in charity shops. So, oh, we're at, we're at half an hour. Okay, so it's another long one. Um, okay, thanks very much for watching, everybody. And um, uh, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it wasn't too long for you.